Well, Alex, I first of all wanted to start off by saying congratulations on the film. It was an absolutely fantastic film, so congratulations. Thank you. Thank you for watching. No problem. So, Alex, tell us a little bit about where the idea for this film first came about for you. Yeah, I think the film is definitely a product of uh, some, you know, white hot rage I felt uh, about my, my upbringing, about my childhood, about my adult life. Uh, growing up gay, uh, you know, you have this big weight on your shoulders, especially, you know, I, I'm 38 now. So growing up, you know, uh, 20, 20 years of coming of age uh, and, and the whole world is telling you that your desires, uh, your attractions, you know, your sexuality is wrong, you know, and then it's something to be ashamed of. Um, and, and, you know, frankly, that's just not true. It's a completely normal uh, facet of, 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 human, of humanity. And so um, as I kind of got older and started doing more research, I, I'm a health reporter by trade. Uh, you know, you start to realize that there is some really good sex ed education out there, sex education that could save lives, could really do some real good, uh, that, that start with the premise that, you know, consensual sex between adults is just one of the most wonderful, beautiful pleasurable amazing things about being a human and and we should start there when it comes to how we think about and how we how we manage and navigate sex um and and you know i i soon learned that the reason why this isn't taught in schools at least in america uh, but also probably for for many other countries uh is because no politician's gonna run on the platform of you know we have to normalize anal sex we need to be talking about masturbation you know you're gonna lose your election if, if you run on those platforms uh, so rather than, you know, after, you know, years and years of, 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 of railing and screaming into the, the, the abyss, I thought, you know, I have this background in health reporting. I have this passion and, and this this anger. Uh, let's do something with it. And, and, and uh, we, we started the process of the film from that. You're absolutely right. I was recently talking to a group of friends that I went to high school with, and we remembered the, the first video they ever showed us in sex education was a cartoon where a girl was married to a rabbit with no, it was just really, really weird. And then that was supposed to be teaching you about reproduction. And for a majority of us in the class, it was just laughter, like this stupid cartoon about a, a girl married to a rabbit giving birth to rabbits. Where do you think that those kinds of things came from? Did you, when you were doing this documentary, were you able to discover why sex education in schools has gone so wrong? Yeah, you know, I think for the, the when you think about why there is sex education in school in any way, uh, it, it's really to fill in the gaps. If you, you know, most parents are not trained to talk about these things with their kids. You know, uh, it, many kids, at least in America, are lucky if their parents even sit down with them an hour and, just, and explain these things. So there is a clear public health uh, reasoning, rationale, that we need to teach people how to get beat from pregnant, how, you know, how to avoid disease. Um, but usually, but it, but you know, it's 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 coded, it's it's framed as sex education, but it's really pregnancy and disease education, which yeah. is such a small, minuscule part of what sex is, right? Like, you know, if if every time we had sex, it was for the to get pregnant, you know, there'd be so many more people. It's clearly sex is, has very little to do uh, with, with pregnancy, really. Um, and so, and so, I think you know we do a big disservice to our kids uh, right now if we don't talk about the real reasons we all have sex, the real reasons kids know we all have sex, uh, and and how we actually make that work for us in a healthy way. Because the way we're doing it now just leads to some very unhealthy behaviors. Alex, you mentioned before about politicians wouldn't be able to go into an election with this as a platform because it is still kind of a taboo topic. I know here in Australia, if we start talking about sex education in schools, in media, it gets shut down very, very quickly. Was it difficult for you to get this film off the ground because of those taboos? <laughs> yeah, to get, to get money for it, for sure, was difficult. You know, it's, it's just not a safe thing. And the way I wanted to do it, I wanted to show, you know, nude bodies. I wanted to show, talk about masturbation, anal sex, all the things that, that people really are curious about and have real angst about, I think. Um... So yeah, it, it, it's, it's a challenge to get people to uh, feel like this is an important thing, right? an important topic. Um, but, but sex and sexuality is so intertwined in every kind of thing that we do, every interaction we have, uh, how we present ourselves to the world, you know, the relationships we have and the way we interact with society at large. And, and so it, it feels like to me that, that, that 
this was needed for me to help understand this and, and doing the movie made me really realize just how ignorant so many of us are when it comes to sex sexuality, myself included. When you first sat down to start work on the documentary, how did you go about that? Did you just write down a list of topics that you wanted to explore in the actual film itself, or did you kind of go out there and talk to people and find out what they wanted to know? Yeah, a little of both, a little of both. I, I think, uh, you know, talking to friends, you know, I thought a lot of my problems were because I was gay, uh, and, and don't get me wrong, they are a lot because I'm gay, uh, but, but you know, straight guys, straight women, all different types of people, they all have that thing about their sexuality that they're uncomfortable with, scared of, uh, afraid to admit. We all have something we want to come out about, you know, regardless of our background. Um, and so little conversations like that made me think I was onto something. And then, yeah, and I have a great creative partner. His name is Leonardo Neri, who wrote the movie with me. And, and we kind of just sat down and wrote every topic, you know, thinking back when we were learning about sex, how did we learn about it? So religion was a big part. Porn is a big part. Our parents are a big part. The media, movies are a big part. Uh, school, you know, and then finding all those pol politics. So finding all those little facets of how we construct our sexual morality, how we construct uh, this, the ideas we have about sex, and then just find the people in each one of those arenas that we thought we could talk to and have a, have a constructive conversation about. The comedy element to this is very important as well because it keeps it as a serious documentary but, but light for its audience as well. How important was that for you to, to bring in that little bit of lightness into it as well? Oh, I, I was, it was the primary goal, I think, that we have to keep people laughing. You know, I, I think a lot about what, what is humor and what is comedy and why is it so such a something we crave? And, you know, I think at its very bare bones, at a, as a physiological response, laughter, comedy, that sort of thing, it's this release of tension, right? It's this release, especially when you do it in a crowd, too. It, it's so great. Um, you know, it, it's it's like you saying these deep truths that you didn't even realize you were carrying and, and saying them out loud for the first time hearing it releases the tension. And, and to me, that's like the exact same thing good sex does, right? It's, it's like this great release of tension. Uh, and, 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 you know, if, if we're talking about sexual shame, something that is very uncomfortable for most people, if we kept it serious, you're just going to heighten those feelings, you know. And uh, the only way we can get people to actually start to release that shame on a real visceral kind of spiritual level was to do it through comedy. So that was kind of our, our intent. Um, your past as a health reporter, tell us a little bit about how that helped you with this film as well. Yeah, I, I think it really helped. You know, I, honestly, I think the training also helped in, in two ways. One, just, you know, as a health reporter, you're, you're talking to people and, you know, all so many different backgrounds, so many varied ex life experiences. So it helps you really really approach people non-judgmentally, which is a skill I had to learn at least. Uh, but also, I think, just thinking through around it made me think about sex. I, I think we often get very intellectual about sex. Uh, you know, a lot of the debates in the States about abortion, gay rights, all that stuff becomes very heady in many ways. Um, but being a health reporter and being in medical rooms, being in people's lives, you have you realize, oh, there's, you know, health is not just about the medical bills and seeing the doctors. It's such a important life. You know, your health is so important to you on a spiritual, deep, meaningful level. Uh, so approaching sex in that way, too, you know, what is the real core of why sex is so important to us uh, was a big way that, that I think helped us frame a movie that, that, that uh, pays off in many different ways. Definitely. Now, who did you see to be the audience for this film? Like you said before, there are so many people out there that these kinds of films are important to sit down and watch from high school kids right through to as we found out this week, and I'm not sure if you know, but we've got a, a prime ministerial election going on here at the moment, and our current prime minister got up and gave a speech about transgender teens and got about 80% of his facts completely incorrect. So who w did you aim this documentary for, and who do you feel should be watching it? I did, I did hear about that, yeah. I, I think you know, at the beginning, this movie was really for 13-year-old me, right? The, the, the kid who would rather have, you know, died, killed himself than said he was gay. You know, you know, make tell, you know, making the movie for someone like him, uh, that, that sex, this is actually beautiful. The, the fact that you're discovering this new facet of humanity is a wonderful, joyous thing that should be celebrated. And that was kind of our, our initial uh, uh, way we, we framed the movie. But I think as we went through it, we realized more and more 
Uh, I mean, the movie is for everyone, for sure. We're all sexual beings. But it really ended up being for parents, I think. I, I think a lot of the debate around sex education is around, you know, I, I think, and I would say conservatives would say, you know, this belongs in the home. This does not belong in the school or the government. This is belongs in the home. Um, but, but you know, most parents in the home are, are not talking about sex. And if they are, it's very awkward and weird and, and, and in many ways can make things worse. Uh, so this was really aimed at parents showing them, you know, you know, we believe you have the best intentions. We definitely believe that this stuff belongs in the home. Uh, but let's make sure when, when you're talking about it, you're, you're, you're talking about it in a way uh, that actually is, is helping kids rather than potentially making things even worse. So, Alex, what would your advice be to parents out there who watch this documentary? Would your advice be for them to to watch the documentary and then show their kids the documentary or to sit down and actually watch the film with their kids? You know, you know, I, I think it's it's so dependent on you, dependent on your kid. You know, one thing I've learned is we're all in different parts of the journey. So if you don't feel comfortable watching with your kid, that's totally fine. If you don't think your kid should watch it, I understand. I, I hope that would change. Uh, but yeah, ultimately, we see the film as a conversation starter. You know, you know, I, I was so surprised going to so many sex education classes uh, with kids that, you know, at the beginning of the film, I would have thought were too young. But very quickly, I realized these kids already have a lot of questions about it that no one was answering. Um, and, and so, but it, being, it can be tough to talk about this. I'm not, I'm not under any disillusion that, that, that it's tough to talk about this uh, in the culture that we live in. So, so the film is hopefully an icebreaker for you where you can point to the film and say, wasn't that funny in the film? Or what did you think about the film? And then you can actually start to have the conversations about what are the values we have in this family about sex? What does sex mean to me and your pair, other parent? Or how do we deal with it? And so, so hopefully I, I see the film as an icebreaker and a way to get past that discomfort because we all need a little help in that area. Definitely. For a film that is aimed for families and for an educational film, it has done so well on the festival circuit. Did that surprise you? It, it, yes. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, you know, it's your first feature film. It's, it's, uh, you have no idea how it will be received. You've seen the movie, you know, a thousand times, so you already have this weird, like, love-hate relationship with it. So, yeah, I've just been so overjoyed that across continents, you know, across cultures, across, you know, identities, it's, it's someone has found something in it that, that moved them and touched them and, and got them to think a little differently about sex. Uh, so that's really the, the conversations I've had with so many of the audience members have been overwhelming and, and I'm still trying to process. Awesome. Well, Alex, to finish off again, I want to say congratulations on such a an amazing film, but also such an important film. So I guess to completely sum up, what would you like to say to everybody out there who is about to sit down and watch this film? Yeah, I, I would say, you know, wa- I, I would say watch it with someone you love. Watch it with someone who you want to talk about these things with, but don't know how. Um, I've been blown away by how many different types of couples have come to me and said something along the lines of, I've been with my partner for 20 years, we've never had this conversation, and after watching your film, uh, it opened something up that we were able to have a conversation that we've never had before. That's just been the, the, so such an honor and so so amazing to hear. So, so I would say, uh, yeah, you know, uh, it, it's it's not homework. We made it as fun and entertaining and lighthearted as possible uh, with some real moments of, of, of joy. So so uh, I would say enjoy it. And hopefully, you know, you'll, you'll be able to uh, see sex in a whole new light. 